Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission behind the enemy lines, knowing you may never return alive? What you have just heard is the question asked during the war to agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. This is Cloak and Dagger. Black Warfare, Espionage International Intrigue. These are the weapons of the OSS. Today's story, A War of Words, concerns an American agent who personally delivered a message to the colonel of a Japanese camp and is suggested by actual incidents recorded in the Washington files of the Office of Strategic Services. A story that can now be told. Okay, Harry, I've spotted it. There's our target. Check. Ready to let him go? Ready. Bombs away. There she goes. I dropped every one of those bombshells we had in the plane, and they hit the target right on the nose. And the explosion that followed sounded like this. Just as much noise as paper makes when it flutters to the ground. Those were our bombshells. Propaganda leaflets. Leaflets designed by OSS to lower the morale of the Japanese soldiers in that camp in Burma. Those were our silent weapons. I'm going to turn back now. Okay, Pete. Uh, Harry, what do you think of that phonied up picture of the bombing at Tokyo we just dropped? Looked authentic to me. <laughs> well, I like that little pamphlet, too. You know, the one that began the... Uh, Sons of the rising sun, <laughs> it is better to surrender than fight without bullets or die of starvation in the jungle. Yeah, that one was real cute. <laughs> yeah, it sure ought to give those lousy Japs something to think about. I... I'm sorry, Harry. I... I shouldn't have said that. That's okay, Pete. Forget it. Let's beat our own record and get him back this time, huh? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Sometimes the guys forgot that Harry was short for Haryoshi. Haryoshi Nabura. And though I like to think of myself as an American Japanese, even Pete Barno thought of me as a Japanese American. I had to learn not to be too sensitive. Come in, boys. Come on in. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Sit down. Cigarette? Thank you. Now, you two have done a good job in the past few months peppering Burma with that propaganda material. Oh, here's a light, Harry. Thank you. And uh, we already have begun to uh, see the results. Oh, how's that, Colonel? Well, you know how live Japanese prisoners used to be at a premium. Rather than be captured, they'd commit harakiri almost in defiance. Oh, yeah, I, I, I hear a lot of them are surrendering lately. That's right. Their morale isn't what it was. Good. And you, too, can take part of the credit for that. But uh, tomorrow... Tomorrow, I want you to go one step further. We're listening, sir. Uh, take a look at this document. Uh, what is it? Chinese or Japanese? Mm -hmm. it's, well, Greek to me. I can tell you what it is, Pete. It's obviously a forged order to the commander of the Japanese camp to withdraw his troops three miles east. Well, I hope it's not an obvious forgery to him, Lieutenant Nabura, because if he falls for it and moves his camp, our armies will have a clean road right into Bamo. And once we get there, Burma's practically in our hands. Oh, I see. Oh, begging your pardon, Colonel, but... Certainly. What are we supposed to do to walk into that Jap camp and deliver these uh, orders? Oh, no, no. Your job is much simpler. All you have to do is fly over the OSS Detachment 101 at Assam and drop this document. 
The Cochin natives and our agents there will do the rest. We've contacted them by radio. They expect it. Check, Colonel. <laughs> yeah, this will be a snap. Nothing to it. <laughs> How'd I know we'd run into a tap zero? Right back at you, buddy! Now he dived too fast for you, Harry. I'm gonna grab more sky. Maybe you can lose him up there. He's on a tail. Maybe not for long. Hang on, boy! Most of the way up, the air was thin enough so that I could see the nose of that zero following us. And then at 7,000 feet, the air became thick and we lost him. But the plane had taken quite a beating. How bad is the lot you, Pete? Well, we haven't more than 50 miles to go. Then we can set down in Cutchin territory, make repairs before heading back to India. Okay. Instead of dropping that document, we'll deliver it in person when we get there, huh? If we get there. What? What's that wing? It's coming off or he hit us. There she goes. What do we do now? I'm going to kick the stick forward as hard as I can. Put her in a loop. Well, that's crazy. Now that'll toss us backwards out of the cockpit. Don't pull your ripcord before you fall free of the plane. We'll land in the river. Now keep your feet dry. Here we go. We fell free of the plane. I jerked the ripcord and my chute opened. On the way down, I inflated my May West and the little lifeboat swelled up. Below me, I could see Pete drifting slowly in the Brahma Putra River. And then I hit the water. Oh, boy. <laughs> ah, this is a nice mess to be in. Not even sure exactly where that 101 detachment's located. It's somewhere to the south, isn't it? Yeah, uh huh. That's a help. Whew. Whew. This jungle stinks, doesn't it? I can think of a lot of places I'd rather be. For instance? For instance, anywhere. This place is probably crawling with enemy patrols. Ooh. Well, that's a pleasant thought. Careful, oh, careful. careful. Don't trip over those roots. The jungle was heavy and oppressive. The tall trees spread a canopy over our heads and shut out what little sun there was. After a few miles, our shirts were ripped to shreds on the brambles, and blood ran into our eyes from the leeches on our foreheads. And then Pete stopped short. Harry, look. The river. What river? What is it? The Brahma Putra, where we land it. You see it? See it to the right? I don't get it. We passed it a few miles back. Yeah, we sure did. You see that clump of roots? They look familiar? That's where you almost tripped right there by the swamp. But... I pay. Yeah, huh? We made a nice big circle. <laughs> right back where we started. How the devil did we do that? Well, anything could happen in this lousy... Hurry. Jump patrol. Oh, well, this just isn't our day. They're coming this way quick, the swamp. They'll never, they'll never see us. Let's get in the water till they pass. All right. All right, that's it. Now get down. Just keep your nose up to breathe. If you have to, get down under and don't breathe. All right. That a thing. I could have reached out and untied their shoelaces. Let's get out of here. That night, we lay side by side, deep in the jungle, on top of coarse undergrowth, underneath the trees from which lianas hung down like braided ropes. We shifted our positions every few minutes as a regiment of ants and bugs crawled into our clothing and kept us awake. And then towards morning, we fell asleep, exhausted. When we awoke, the sun had found a hole in the branches and crawled through. Oh, boy, that sun's hot. Is it? What do you mean, is it? I'm cold, Pete. I got the shakes. 
Fever? I don't know. I just feel sick. I'm sick of my stomach. We can't sit here. You think you can travel? Uh-huh. Oh, sure. Come on. Boy, that sun's blazing, isn't it? Well, I thought you said you had the shakes. Uh-huh. Oh, nothing, nothing. Well, come on, Harry. Come on now, up on your feet, boy. You'll be all right. Yeah. Come on, boy, that's it. Come on. There we go. We started walking again. Our wrists had open sores on them from jungle rot. My head was hot, my hands were cold. And I felt sick. Awful sick. Harry, how do you feel? I'll be okay. Uh, it was that swamp we hid in. Just those lousy bugs that got under your skin, eh? I'll be all right. Uh, 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 Harry! Harry! Can you hear me? Harry. Harry. Okay, fella, now just take it easy there. That's it. This cold cloth on your forehead will make you feel better. You'll see, boy. Pete? Yeah. Yeah, it's Pete. Where am I? <laughs> Couldn't you say anything more original than that for crying out loud? <laughs> I blacked out the now, 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 don't talk so much. You blabbed enough when you were off your head. Uh, who's, uh, Okasan? A girl I knew at UCLA. I figured. How long ago has it been since? You know. Two days. Have we got enough rations? Uh, we'll be okay. Uh, don't lie to me. I said we'll be okay. Now, don't try to sit up, Harry. Well, how far do you think we are from the Cutchins? Well, I think I've got the direction pretty well mapped out now. About a day's travel, due south. Well, not if you sit here with me for a week. Now, no, no, don't talk uh, so go much. Go on, Pete. Get out of here. I'll tell you what. If you make it there by yourself, you can come back with some of the natives and get me. Not on your life. I'm not leaving you. But, she... shh, shh. Quiet. Someone's outside. Pete drew his gun and crawled out to the mouth of the cave. My head was pounding harder than before. Maybe... Maybe it was the fever... Maybe it was because I had to lie there helpless while Pete went out alone to whatever was outside. Do not shoot. Friend, I'm friend. Who are you? Uh, Maybe Sudi, him. Scout, I'm scout. Saw you this morning from top of tree. Saw you at book. Saw uh, uniform. Yeah, yeah, you've got good eyesight. But you still haven't told me who you are. I told you. I'm Sudi, scout. Cutchin scout. Cutchin? Cutchin. Uh, oh, why didn't you say so? You're from Assam? You're... You... You're from the OSS detachment? He's right. Oh. Harry! Harry, did you hear that? Well, how's this for the mountain coming to Mohammed? It's great. It's just great. Would like I take you to camp? Would like? Oh, boy, would love. Oh, look, I've, I've got a sick friend in here in the cave there. Uh, a fever. Can you fix him up? We'll see. I looked up from the bed of leaves that Pete had made. The Cutchin scout who leaned over me was short and squat with long matted hair and teeth worn to a black stub by beetle nut. He took a good look at me and jumped back as if he'd been bitten. Japanese! It's Japanese! I kill! kill. No, no, no! Hold on there! Wait a minute! You... Hold on, I said! <laughs> now listen, Su Ling. Su Ling, this... this is American. Just like I said. It's Japanese! It's no use, please. Listen, Sue, is a Japanese, yes, yes, that's right. But is American, too. Huh? You savvy? American. Friend. Look at his uniform. You say friend. I say Japanese. We'll fix up from fever, then bring to camp. Let them say which is what. I don't know what he mixed up in those witch doctor concoctions besides the juice of mahogany leaves and the roots of the liana vines. But whatever it was, I was on my feet two days later. We started out for Detachment 101. Only this time we had a guide. And then the next night, out of nowhere, we came upon it. Well, what do you know? Here it was, the OSS secret hideout. 
carved right into the jungle of Burma. So this is Detachment 101. They were neat straw-thatched pashas. A mess hall, a well-equipped hospital, mortars, bazookas, crates of ammunition. Harry, Harry, look, a woman, a woman, a Red Cross nurse. G.I. paratroopers in bright-colored shirts and unlaced jump boots were strolling about, mingling with the native troops. Wow! Oh, this is just like a city in the wilderness, isn't it? It's like nothing I've ever seen before. And probably like nothing you'll ever see again. Huh? Well, well where'd you come from? Yeah, sure, and I've been standing behind you all the time. Would you like to have me show you around, maybe? Oh, uh, well, not now, thanks. The guide who brought us here disappeared. We've got to find the head man around here. We have something for him. Ah, but you'll live longer if you live slower and don't drive yourselves. My mother, Esther Soul, told me that in Dublin many years ago. I'm Irish, you know. No, no, you don't say. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> now, take a good look at our little camp. As I said, you'll probably never see anything like it again if you live to be 104. It's as if the leprechaun set it down right in the middle of the wilderness. Well, we'll look around later if you don't mind. Uh, who's in now charge? Now, you take all these lads, the paratroopers who were fast down in the jungle. They all had the same look about them when they first came, as if they'd stumbled into a bed of far-leaf clothes. Now, uh, look, Mac, would you mind very now, much... that lad there was a farmer in Wisconsin. And they went talking to the nurses from Boston, originally, that is. And the tall lad is a Texan. What we want... And it took a lot to make him say that this looked better to him than Texas. <laughs> Were you uh, forced down here, too? Uh, well, uh, in a manner of speaking, uh, yes, I was. What did you do before the war? I, uh, well, I'll tell you, lads. I operated a hot fur ring from Hoboken to Canarsie. You hot what? Fur ring? A right thriving little business it was, too. And after the war, I'll probably go back to it. This guy's off his rocker. Oh, look, where can we find somebody in authority? At evening mass with everyone else. Mass? Of course. You see that big straw hut at the far end? You'll find him there. We got there, we found our friend with the bro. The one who told us he ran a hot fur ring from Hoboken to Canasi, officiating at the service. Every once in a while, he'd look up at us, and I could see the suggestion of a smile around his lips. There was a soldier standing next to us. Hey, hey, who is that? That? Why, that's Father O'Toole. He practically organized the 101. Yeah, sure, and I said it just to see the look on your faces later on. <laughs> well, take a good look. <laughs> Boy, mine's red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Father O'Toole. Yes? Here are the four Japanese orders the colonel gave us in India. Of course, the original plan about dropping them over to you and turning back didn't work out, but just as long as we got them here. Just as long as we have them, we know what to do with them. Now, there's a Japanese mail courier coming through tomorrow night from the groom to the Jap camp at Moklum. Now, I'll have Su Ling or one of the other scouts intercept him and uh, deposit this document in his mail pouch. Oh, I get it, Father. When he comes to, he won't know what hit him, but he'll keep going with the forged papers, eh? Yeah, sure, you got a quick brain, lad. And uh, by the by... Oh, yes, Father. You know, since you're Japanese as well as American, I'd suggest you stay close to me for the next day or so until you leave. You see, then the natives will get over their suspicions of you. I see. Which one of you men was down with fever? Uh, uh, I, I was, nurse. I'm sorry for barging into your hut this way, Father O'Toole, but Su Ling told me one of these men had jungle sickness. Wait, that's quite all right, nurse. Amy, lads, take a look at her. Isn't she a fair Colleen, though? <laughs> that's enough of your blarney, Father. Come with me, please. What's your name? Nabura. Lieutenant Harry Nabura. I'm okay now, really. I... That may be so. We just want you at the hospital for a checkup. Come along. Hey, hey, wait. You, uh... <laughs> Do you mind if I come, too? No, not at all. <whistles> <whistles> The doc who looked me over gave me a clean bill of health. 
They must have been those witch doctor herbs of Su Ling's. Later, Father O'Toole gave us a basha to ourselves, and Pete and I fell on those army cots. And then about three o'clock in the morning... Harry, Harry, what's that? Uh, I I, I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Hey, where's where's everybody running to? Oh, there's that nurse maybe she knows. Hey, nurse, nurse! Nothing to be alarmed about, boys. What happened? One of the cab approaches. Our watchdog caught a prowling enemy scout. Well, I didn't hear any dog. Oh, this is a silent watchdog. What? Actually, it's a crossbow with a 150-pound pull. It's set up so any intruder who touches the trip string is shot with a poisoned arrow. Well, well, that, uh, that's quite a watchdog, isn't it? Yes. I've been thinking of putting one up in front of my tent. <coughs> So Sally, so Sally, Father all O'Toole. Right now, it's Suling all right now. Su Ling did not now. mean... Uh, now it's done, Su Ling. It can't be helped. It's all right. Oh, hello, Father. How oh, there you are, lads. Come on in. Oh, what's up, Father? Uh, Su Ling make big mistake. Big, big mistake, oh, What Ling. kind of a mistake? Well, I'll tell you, boys. Uh, it's like this. I sent Su out last night to uh, intercept the Japanese courier and deposit this document in his mail pouch. What went wrong? Well, it seems that Su Ling doesn't know his own strength, to quote a phrase, and he hit him too hard. I am very much afraid the courier will not be able to deliver the mail, after all, to the camp at Muklum. Well, look, Father O'Toole, that document is important. It's got to get there. Where's the uh, courier now? In the hospital, receiving the very best of care, I assure you. And the mail sack? In my possession. Okay. Then another Jap courier is going to take his place and deliver the mail. Well, you're nuts, Harry. What other Jap courier? Me? What? <laughs> now I know you're nuts. Pete, when I switch uniforms with that guy, take a good look at me. I promise you, you'll never recognize me. The idea has a touch of genius, lad. I think it may work. I hope it may work. Slip in an extra prayer for me, Father. While I was at it, I went after the letters and cards that were going to the Japanese soldiers and phoning them up. I erased everything but the signatures and wrote about how bad conditions were back in Tokyo, how the black market was flourishing, how they were being bombed every night. At dawn, I had changed into the captured courier's uniform. I had the mail sack over my shoulder and soothing at my side to take me most of the way. Good luck again, me boy. Thank you, Father O'Toole. Well, Harry, Harry, you, you sure that you want to do this? Walking right into the lion's den. If they get wise to you. If they get wise to me, she got a ganai. What's that mean? It's good Japanese for so what? Hop! Hop! Who goes there? Answer, or I shoot. A courier from the Brigham with mail for your soldiers and a special dispatch for your commander. Mail courier, come across. Let me see your face. I do not know you. Where's are the runner? The papers. Let me see your papers. Identification. Here. Very good. Pass. Where is uh, this patch you say is for me? Uh, here, Colonel Nagel. Why are you so late? Mail was expected yesterday. Uh, I it, it uh, was unavoidable. Answer my question directly. Why are you late? A uh, native uh, Kachin warrior attacked me on the way. I had to fight him off, Colonel Nagel. Ah, those Kachins, silent devils in the jungle. Shadows. Impossible to know when they are about. They jump out at you. Devils. Oh, yes, Colonel Nagel. Well, what are you waiting for? You may leave now. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. I leave. I leave. I was glad to leave. It would have been easy up to that point. I tried to keep from walking too fast to the gate. Pass. Let me see a pass to read. Uh, here, it was stamped at Colonel Nagel's headquarters. Right. You can go. Hey, 
You are deaf? Did you not hear me shoot off a gun to call your attention? Uh, why you want me? I do not want you. I received the word at gate from Colonel Egeo. He wanted you to come back. Come. <laughs> There you are, courier. I want to make sure you did not leave here. Uh, is there uh, something wrong, uh, Colonel Nagel? What are you talking about? What could be wrong? Here, important message for your colonel. Take it. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Colonel Nagel. I should be glad to deliver this to my colonel. This time, nobody stopped me when I left the camp at Mokloom and started back for Kutchin headquarters. I must have been within two miles of Detachment 101 when I realized I was being followed. I couldn't see anyone or hear anyone, but I knew someone was there. In the brush or in the trees, hidden somewhere along the trail. I started to run faster. My lungs started to ache with each breath, and my strength was gone. A hangover from the fever I'd just gotten over. If I had escaped from the Japanese camp and fallen into headhunter hands, I knew I didn't have a chance. Hello, Yoshi no donkey. I talk Japanese? English? What are you? Headhunter? Good luck. Good luck. Ravanadi. Ah, now bless my soul, Lieutenant Nabura. I see you're awake. How are you feeling, Harry? Father or two. Pete, <laughs> what are you doing here? Sit up, Lieutenant. Let me change that bandage on your head. Now, wait a minute. How did you get here? Had yeah, you mixing things up a bit, lad? You mean, of course, how did you get back here to the OSS camp? To the what? Ah, well, now, it is very simple. Oh, I have an apology to make for my friends, the Kutchins, who brought you here. They'd been out scouting for the past week, and they did not know you. Also, of course, the Japanese uniform you were wearing confused them. But I... I... It was a pity that they speak only their own language, so that you couldn't clear up the situation. I have to teach them how to speak English. <laughs> English the way it should be spoken. <laughs> Lieutenants Haruyoshi Nabura and Peter Barno were returned to India by plane from the rescue camp at Assam. And a few weeks later, a special dispatch informed OSS headquarters that the strategic city of Bamo had been taken. Thus, once again, the report of another agent closed with the words... Mission accomplished. Listen again next week for another true adventure from the files of the OSS on... Cloak. And dagger. Heard in tonight's Cloak and Dagger adventure as Pete was Chuck Webster. Harry was played by Ralph Bell. Father O'Toole by Eric Dressler. Others were John Allison, Raymond Edward Johnson, Carl Weber, Jerry Jarrett, Maurice Tarplin, and Guy Rep. The script for Cloak and Dagger was written by Winifred Wolfe and Jack Gordon, and the music was under the direction of John Gart. Sound effects by Wes Conant, Manny Siegel, and Norman Gruenfelder. Tonight's true OSS adventure was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alistair McBain. This program was produced by Louis G. Cowan and Alfred Hollander under the direction and supervision of Sherman Mark.